Uh, a few years ago, around the time that many of the students here arrived at Rutgers and started, so in 2006, I represented the computer science department at an open house for some incoming college students and their parents. So, you know, I, I wasn't chair at that time. I was just representing my lab and telling them a little bit about the computer science department. I told them about the research that my students and I are doing. I answered questions about the department. And it was, it was mostly fun and very collegial. But near the end, a skeptical man raised his eyebrows at me and said, essentially, you know, if I wanted my son to learn computer science, I'd send him to tech school. But I won't, because all the jobs have been outsourced to India anyway. So I just, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to respond to that. I kind of took a beat and I thought about it for a moment. And I, and I, you know, I told him, I, I respectfully disagree with you. The world of technology and ideas is changing very quickly for the foreseeable future. Talented people who know how to think about computer science are going to be the ones who are gainfully employed. Good sir, they, we, <laughs> are the ones who actually understand how things are changing and what we can do to participate in the process. You may be missing out, but I implore you to give your son the chance to contribute to the world of the future. <laughs> okay, actually I didn't say that last part. Um, I really just said the first part. But one of the reasons that I, did, I wasn't able to kind of make my case as strong as I, as I could is because I didn't have a lot of concrete examples that I could provide to really back myself up and make my case. But I really do believe that things are changing fast and that technology keeps altering the landscape of our lives in unexpected ways and we need to be finding ways uh, to, uh, to, to stay on top of things and to really understand what's going on. So, so just to, to, to really ground this idea and bring it home, I thought I'd give you a little bit uh, of a tour of how some things have changed in just the past few years. In fact, just from the time that these folks started at Rutgers, by and large, until now. So 2006, September. So fall 2006. Yeah, sorry guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll, we'll fill this in. It won't be as interesting as you might think, but it's kind of interesting. All right, so uh, September 2006, just after these folks entered college, Facebook. Started. Now, Facebook had been limited to a few universities at that time, but in September it actually opened up to the world, and it provided an exciting new opportunity, an exciting new social networking paradigm, and now it's really just part of the way that we think about the computer world. In October 2006, a teenage girl committed suicide after being taunted on MySpace, and that provides an example of kind of the downside of social networking, and some of the things that we have to be aware of and, and be thinking about. It didn't actually post. November 2006, the Wii became available. The Wii Remote instantly became one of the most innovative human computer interaction devices in recent memory and really has, has, has provided all kinds of interesting opportunities for, for pushing the technology forward. December 2006, Verizon began a large scale expansion of fiber to the home, changing expectations of what can be delivered online and in what quantity. January 2007, the first terabyte disks were announced, expanding the qu quantity of what we can store digitally. February 2007, Gmail, now a household name, first became available to the public. Now many organizations, including ours, are contemplating changing how they provide email services to their constituents based on this kind of model and how successful it's been. In March 2007, Netflix Instant Watch became available, effectively expanding our movie libraries by thousands of titles. April 2007, Intel quad-core processors became widespread, continuing the multi-core trend. Multi-core designs now dominate computer architecture research. May 2007, Google Street View launched with implications for a host of new application possibilities and perhaps some privacy concerns. June 2007, YouTube, which had just been bought by Google for uh, $1.65 billion just a few months earlier, launched a mobile version. You can watch TV anywhere. Or actually, you can watch cats, I guess, anywhere. Uh, in Ju uh, July 2007, six months after its release, the iPhone security features were bypassed. <laughs> August 2007, after only a few months online, Twitter was mentioned in a mainstream comic strip. Now anyone without a Twitter feed looks behind the times. In related news, the computer science department will be starting a Twitter feed sometime <laughs> this fall. <laughs> September 2007, a, a Minneapolis woman pleaded guilty to running an underage prostitution ring through Craigslist, giving people another kind of computer virus to worry about. Uh, October 2007, Google and IBM began funding research in initiatives on cloud computing, a trend that's, uh, that's changing how software is organized. 
November 2007, the Kindle was released, providing a new way to distribute the written word to people. December 2007, Rock Band goes on sale, uh, resulting in new ways to think about multiplayer gaming and what it means to actually play a video game. <coughs> January 2008, GM announced that they plan to start testing driverless cars in 2015. So, and, you know, the computer scientists of the world are going to be the ones to try to make sure that that's not going to kill everybody. <laughs> February 2008, Toshiba surrendered, making, uh, ending the HD format wars, long live Blu-ray. Uh, March 2008, Hulu launched, making TV watchable even uh, TV watching even more flexible because you know we needed to spend more time in front of the tube. Uh, April 2008, HP Labs announced the development of a memristor. I didn't know about this until I started to, to research this presentation. It's actually a fourth fundamental electronic circuit element with resistors and capacitors and inductors, and people are starting to talk about how it's going to provide entirely new kinds of circuit designs. Uh, perhaps faster databases and, and different ways of, of doing artificial intelligence. Uh, May 2008, the Roadrunner supercomputer from IBM and Los Alamos National Labs was the first to reach the petaflop mark at 10 to the 15 operations per second, opening the door for a new scale of scientific simulations. Ju June 2008, Lego announced We Do, a USB-enabled Lego device for teaching elementary school robotics. July 2008, Apple's App Store opened, which has been described as a bold new model for lightweight software development and distribution. So a lot of us may be writing in the, in the future when we write our programs for other people to use, we may be distributing them through things like the App Store. August 2008, Intel and Partners released the U USB 3.0 specification. It's 400 times faster than the original USB protocol. In September 2008, Skype became a part of the vernacular when Who Wants to Be a Millionaire added Skype a Friend as one of its options to contest it. <laughs> it's a verb in that sense. Uh, October 2008, the Android operating system was released as open source, providing a new platform for smartphone developers. November 2008, the Green Grid established a user-centered advisory council to steer discussions on the design and management of energy-efficient data centers. December, oh, that was December. January 2009, Intamar, that's the French Navy computer network, was one of many systems infected with the Conficker virus. My, Microsoft eventually offered a $250,000 bounty to track down those responsible. February 2009, a 14-year-old in Wisconsin was arrested for refusing to stop texting messages in school. I don't know if that's a computer science thing, but we should all be a little bit careful, I think. <laughs> March 2009, Google Voice was released. And it may very well change what we think, uh, the way that we think about what a telephone number is. April 2009, Apple made DRM protection free versions of songs available in iTunes, calling into question current attempts to secure digital information. May 2009, the official White House photographer began making his photos available via Flickr. Right, so our, our government is using Flickr to let us know what's going on. June 2009, Twitter plays a highly visible role in the Iranian pro protests intertwining political expression and digital communication. July 2009, MIT's lifelong kindergarten group launched Scratch Ed for educators using the programming language Scratch for teaching programming. August 2009, with the help of a new algorithm called Shape, scientists decoded the entire HIV-1 genome, hopefully opening ways of stopping the spread of AIDS and helping people who are infected. September 2009, a team of scientists claimed the $1 million Netflix prize, and in the process they developed uh, a number of technologies, including ensemble-based technology, that's really having a huge impact on how people are thinking about automated recommendation and a lot of other statistical problems. October 2009, Windows 7 was released to the public, replacing Vista. I'm told it's uh, actually okay. <laughs> November 2009, the Pleo robotic dinosaur went back on sale after briefly becoming extinct in sort of a Jurassic Park move. Um, after uh, the originators had gone bankrupt earlier in the year, the trend toward home-based robotics is well underway. December 2009, Avatar. January 2010, ESP announced that we'll make some of its sporting broadcasts in 2010 in 3D high-definition format. February 2010, Toyota acknowledged that software problems were the cause of brake failures in some of their cars, driving home the idea that software and good software has real-world consequences. March 2010, Microsoft Tag Reader became available on Android phones, heralding an era in which we can click on URLs on real objects. If 
you haven't seen these things, you, have, you take your phone and you point it at a little picture like this that you could, that could be in a magazine or a car or something like that, and then the, it reads that, it's actually encoding of information, and brings up the appropriate website. So this, you could very well start seeing these things everywhere. Um, April 2010, last month, it's only last month, Apple's iPad was released with the new model of perhaps changing our model of what a personal computer really is. I should have a picture of it, but I can hold one up because it's right here. <laughs> Carl says one. How cool was that? All right. So, uh, all right. So, what was that all about? <coughs> How will these developments impact our society in the long term? I have some ideas. Maybe you have some ideas. I don't claim to know all the answers. But the harder question is: This is just four years. I just picked these four years because they're the four years that these folks were in college. What are the next four years going to bring? There's no reason to think that it's not going to be just as revolutionary. So what we try to teach all of you is that there's some fundamental concepts that will underlie all these different items. So what do we do? How do we think about these things as computer scientists? We couldn't teach you each one of these things individually, but we try to teach the underlying ideas. What do we do? Find the right model. What are the objects that make up the new application that you're trying to think about? Understand the primitive operations. What can you do to those objects? You have to think about things that way. Figure, and then third, find out the implications of composition. What is, what is it that happens when you combine these objects using the primitives to make something new? So if you can understand how this works, not only will you be able to stay on top of the changes as they happen, but you'll be one of the people at the forefront of the next big thing. So I just wanted to offer my heartiest congratulations on a job well done and best wishes in the years to come. Thanks, guys.